Hi everyone, Tim the Plane Man here and welcome back to Plane Time Wheelers Soft With Camel Edition. So uh, you may have seen, um, or you may not yet, um, doing a, uh, a little bit of a time lapse of some of the build of the, the Guilo's Sock with Camel. The build is fairly straightforward. There's lots of videos online that show how to build uh, this particular model. So um, there's no, you know, nothing I can add by um, doing it again, really. But I've gotten to a point where I have something that I want to share because it's a very interesting idea that I've got uh, around mounting the, well not just mounting, around doing the ailerons in particular for the for the plane. Ailerons, uh, it, it's from everything that I keep reading, um, including a post on the Guilo's Facebook uh, group just today. Um, it was I think about a P40 model but um, the suggestion straight up as soon as someone said I'm going to build the P40 was um, make sure you put ailerons. Now that follows up from uh, other lessons that uh, you know you guys may have seen if you haven't click, check out Cliff Harvey's videos uh, where he built the Guilo's Spitfire uh, first as a rubber powered plane and then converted it to RC without ailerons just doing rudder and elevator and found it was almost uncontrollable um, and added ailerons. Um, Tim McKay with his video, his conversion of the uh, Guilo Zero um, had a similar experience and he ended up I think having to add ailerons um, to make a plane that flies extremely nicely with the ailerons uh, and not so much without. So given that lesson um, and following through on the sock with camel model I've decided to put ailerons onto the plane and the sort of the really nice thing about this is that the the kit comes kind of with ailerons um, there. The original kit model, and you can see my unboxing video, I'll, I'll, I'll create a link to it, um, is built for uh, three diff four different ways effectively. One is for um, rubber powered free, free flight, the other one is powered pre-flight, including um, assuming you're going to put a, a Cox um, gas-powered engine into it. Uh, the third option is you control, control line uh, flying like I did way back when I, I was doing this stuff when I was a teenager. And the fourth option is just for display. And from some of the pictures and videos I've seen of the Guilo's um, soft with camel model, it can be made to look absolutely gorgeous. Um, just as a display model. Um, Balsa Model Builder, the YouTube tag, has a really nice s s detailed step-by-step -step build of the plane. Um, again, I, I'll link to that, that, that shows how to build this plane. And, and in, in this case, he builds it for display purposes and it looks really sharp. Well, I'm gonna build it the fourth option, which of course wasn't included as an option in the, um, in the original plans, but in the Guilo's plans, it actually includes ailerons. There is a, a cutout for ailerons on the wing, um, in the wing plan, and the the strangest thing about it, um, look, well, maybe it was reasonable back then, but the interesting thing about that is it was the ailerons were only included for the display model version. Well, it, of course, they're not necessary for and wouldn't really work well for control lines. No real way to control them for rubber powered or, or free for free flight, I guess. And so perhaps that makes sense, but um, the design includes, and the kit includes, all of the pieces you need to build ailerons into this model. So to add ailerons to the Sopwith Camel as part of the build in a nutshell is really simple and straightforward. Um, of course, the way mechanism to control them isn't included, and that's, what I want to talk about now, because what I've done in, in my research um, and my sort of my getting back into things and figuring things out and learning what's going on, I've, I've come to understand that, um, you know, the technology in the model world, just like everywhere else in this world we live in, is advancing at a million miles an hour and, uh, and it's hard to keep up. And 
so a lot of people have potential have possibly built things um, in the way they might have before but there are newer options and one of the things that I noticed when I, I started researching this is that there's these wonderful new digital servos that are available and when I say new um, some of them have only have been available for, for quite a few years now um, and some of the research that I, I find, especially some of the older videos, say, oh, you know, I don't necessarily need to use digital servos because they're much more expensive. Well, of course, things change. In electronics in particular, things get cheaper, things get better. And uh, Ground Control RC um, pr recently talked about his conversion of the, the P51, a brushless conversion, and inclu included his discussion of replacing the, the electronics, including the motor and the servos. And, and a, Steve, a throwaway comment from Steve was something like, um, you know, I'm using these little 1.7 gram digital servos and I love digital servos and I wouldn't use anything else. Something like that. And then sort of breezed on to the rest of the conversation. But that, that's what stuck in my mind. That um, and just some other things that I figured out. In addition, what I've decided to do is A, use digital servos. B, use the smallest ones I possibly can. C, well, make use of the fact that I've got these incredibly powerful, tiny little um, micro digital servos that um, maybe can be used in ways they weren't able to be used before. And so that's where I get to the point that I want to show you this, which is, I think, I don't know, I'm kind of excited about it. That's why I wanted to share it before I'm really ready for prime time. But um, this is the this is the wing. This is one wing. This is all I've done so far of the Guilo's sock with camel. It's the lower uh, left wing. Uh, and um, as you can see, and I'll show, I'll put some stills in to show you this, the, um, the ailerons are right there. You build them according to the plan and simply slice along um, the, the, the parts that are just, you know, it's just built to slide a saw in there and cut it off and then there's even like uh, little pegs included in the in the model for um, for putting the hinges in and as you can see I've got these little nylon hinges that I'm using and here's my servo so this is another interesting thing that um, I thought about um, when I realized how tiny this this micro 1.7 gram micro servo is I mean, it, it fits inside the wing um, profile of this still really rather small, um, you know, wing for the, the sock with camel. And the 1.7 gram servo, even at the back end of the wing, um, is small enough to fit inside the wing profile. So, for example, I don't need to mount the servo forward just in order to make, to have space enough to fit the size of the servo inside the wing. I can mount it right here next to the elevator, to, next to the aileron. And, and that got me thinking. Um, and I, I did some research and had a look around, and um, there's a couple of examples of some interesting videos online of using direct drive servos. Uh, one example, I think the name is MicroWings, Micron wings. I'll I'll put the link in, uh, in the description because you know I don't want to take um, credit for something that's not my idea. Um, it was a very interesting idea to, to put direct to, to direct drive the ailerons and uh, and so I've um, I thought so this is what happened. I you know put all of this together, came up with the idea. I've got the ailerons. I've got this little servo. Is it going to be powerful enough? Is this tiny little servo going to be powerful enough to give me the um, the authority, uh, again to quote Steve from Ground Control, um, the authority I need uh, in order to be able to uh, control this, uh, these aile ailerons. And th that's the, the last part of the equation. So again, I, I'll actually link to a blog that I'm, I'm writing uh, about the research that I did. But I, I, I figured out um, well, not so much I figured out. I mean, I did a bunch of Googling. And and the actual calculation to figure out what the power I need for this servo is is not cut and dried, not so obvious. Um, I 
eventually I got down to some physics um, uh, academic papers published by some university that were really too tough for me to, to handle. But I did find a couple of articles that had some um, equations for calculating the amount of torque required to control an aileron based on some simple uh, input parameters. One being the length of the control surface, so how long is the control surface here. The second one being the, the, the width or the cord of the control surface. And the last one being the, the angle. Oh, and the, then the fourth one, of course, being the speed, because depending on the power of the, the speed of the air flowing over the air surface, um, that will affect how much pushback um, the, the, the servo needs to push back against. So based on that, I, I think um, that I need about 0 0.013 newton meters of torque. And that's, that's the, the correct um, metric measurement for torque, newton meters. Most servos um, express it in, um, you know, that you can buy, um, convert that to kilograms per centimeter for some reason that I really don't understand since there's a perfectly good um, uh, unit of measure, um, newton meters, but in any case, the servos come in, seem to come in kilograms per centimeter, and so, uh, so I figured out that that should be, that needs to be about 0 0.1, 0 0.14 kilograms per centimeter um, torque in order to be able to deal with a, it's about a 2.5 centimeter cord and a I think it's an 11 centimeter length of the of that. I've, I've assumed a 30 percent um, uh, maximum throw on the uh, aileron, just for calculation purposes. It actually probably seems to me it should be more like about 15 percent to 20 percent to actually get the control you need. So I'm doing a worst case. So um, and I did about 50 kilometers an hour. So worst case on a pretty fast plane, um, you know for for a balsa, um, you know, vintage model, I should be able to get away with 0.14 kilograms per centimeter of, of torque. And this little digital servo that I've built into the wing here can do 0.15. That's what's documented. So my theory is um, I'm going to do an experiment. I'm going to try it and see what happens. The first part of the experiment was to see how I could build it in. Um, uh, so, so 0.15 um, a torque, and and so this little digital servo should be able to do the job. And if I direct drive it, that means there's no inefficiency. There's no, no there's no power lost due to you know the driving the control arm on this end and driving the control arm on that end, and, and you know loss on in terms of the control it. Um, the torque should work directly on the wing on the aileron surface and control that um, and give it you know basically make it move so I don't know it seems like a good idea so what I thought okay I'm going to give it a try so this is the first wing and it comes together and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it to the camera down right now and show you testing uh, the um, testing this. I haven't um, fixed the hinges. I've just put them in just for the trial purposes. Um, but it uh, it should be interesting to see what happens. This is the part that I think is quite exciting. Sorry for all the talking, but I wanted to get to this point. And I know that some of you may want to may have wanted to just forward through it. And honestly, that's just fine by me. So what I'm going to do, I'm just turn this down and show you how the direct drive of the aileron servo on this little more servo tester I'm just going to use for this. Um, I'll just plug it in. There's a few wires to get everything to work but it really is pretty straightforward and I'm using a tiny little battery just for this purpose but um, in the long run it'll be a much more robust. All right, so there we go. We have um, activity. Um, there's there's the servo. There's the um, there's the aileron. I'll just 
center it. There it is, actually centers quite nicely. I actually had to do quite a little bit of work with lining up the, the servo and feeding the rod through, um, through this rib here. Um, it was a little tricky, but, but uh, I don't know, not too much, not too bad. And now that I've got it centered, and if you notice it's centered, it actually comes out quite nicely. What I had to do was center it first um, and then clip the, the, uh, the servo arm on and then attach the servo arm and make sure I lined it up and then attach the servo arm onto the other one. But it worked fine. And let's see how she works. And look at that. There we go. There we have a direct drive digital servo controlling the aileron on my Sopwith Camel. Um, I could probably watch this for hours if you want to do that. Uh, um, you can always replay this. I, I find that really quite interesting. So I'm going to um, go keep, keep working ahead and building this. Um, I, I won't necessarily drop out and show you anything unless something more interesting happens, prob possibly once I, um, I get the, the wings all together with the plane and I have um, four of these ailerons working in sync, that might be an interesting moment. But in the meantime, uh, this is my plan, this is what I'm, gonna, uh, I'm planning to, to build and uh, we shall see how it works. So uh, I'm signing off now, Tim the Plane Man signing off from plane time. Thanks everyone for watching. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more. This could be an interesting journey. Thank you.